I think it's close enough to 845 to help with the jury on 75 more. Is, are you, are, is everybody out here from 75 Moore Avenue? Yeah. yeah. All right, we're, we're opening the, the um, hearing on 75 Moore. Great. This isn't a continued hearing. No. This is the first. This is the first. Yeah, I mean, unless we have one. No. no. Um, so you, we have this on the agenda. We opened it. Did we it open it immediately? It was opened and continued okay. at the last meeting. Okay. Then this is a continuation. Mm -hmm. This is the first. Is, just out of curiosity, is any of the material that we're going to be looking at tonight material that nobody saw at the site one? I guess. Did, we, did, did, we, we made the adjustments uh, based on what you had asked us for. But you didn't submit it to our consultants or the, 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 the <coughs> planning office? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and I submitted then I revised sent copies. You electronically. No, but that, those were written communications. Right, and then there was one set of plans. Oh, yeah. oh, you've got a set of plans? Yeah, but they're going to show. Yeah. But did Kim and, and, and David have a chance to look at them? I didn't get the plans electronically. I only, only, I only got one set of plans. One set of plans. And I so the answer is yes. did not get these building elevations and colors until now. Until right now? Until right now. No, we've, we've submitted a full packet um, um, two months ago with um, all the elevation, the color plots, um, the site plan in detail. Um, what we've revised since our, um, our site walk was some of the parking um, adjustments that you would ask for. Um, the lighting plan was submitted in detail as well. Um, so what we did was we took the existing, the existing plan and the proposed plan and we showed in detail the parking, which seemed to be, um, you know, a major topic of the, the walkthrough. So, um, we also put in place, which I submitted to Elizabeth, the detailed truck analysis, uh, weight limit capacity, and stuff that was also requested at the walkthrough. Okay. So, what? Let me just tell you right, right off the bat that since our consultants have a, haven't had a chance to review the new material, <clears throat> okay. We're going to have to continue. I just want to tell you that right up front. Well, they've reviewed. They've reviewed everything except for the parking piece, which you had, you know, asked us to. Did you revise the landscaping at all? We did revise the landscaping. There you go. Okay, and it was was it submitted to Kim? Um, um, discussed with Kim. Basically, basically, put what she asked us about the plan. Yeah, but the table the plan. Listen, we we have a certain process of submittal and review so that the planning board doesn't see everything raw the right. night of the presentation, but we, we can look to our consultants for advice. Right. We can look to the planner for advice. Right. People need to be able to look at this material, make their comments, and give us their comments. Okay, part of that was my fault, but I think I ended up. Well, you were, you've only getting, been here four days. Uh, um, <laughs> Gee whiz. Okay. You're all too. Um, but I, I just got the re some revisions yesterday, right? So I submitted um, yesterday the revisions as requested by the interim um, town planner. Susan Hick. Correct. That were requested by you, the board. Yeah. Um, and so we submitted those along with uh, yesterday. yesterday. We won't have had a chance for people, our consultants, to have reviewed them. Okay. Can I just, well, one, one quick question. Did we make any changes to the screen at all? To the screen? No. 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 Okay. So it's the exact same. <clears throat> well, we didn't make changes in that the Kim had. had well, you just we, said. You we put, talked to, uh, uh, the, we added the table which summarized the screen. That's what we added. There still wasn't a table on it. That's I thought okay. people, there were some suggestions about additional screening that we were talking about. For one thing, screen, additional screening from the, from the um, water department, the old water department director's house, down to across the, the, across the, the way. Across the way. Yeah. We, we talked about that at the site walk. That didn't, that didn't show up on the site plan? The, there's no new screen showing on there. No Just what we had, what we did have was a table summarizing. All right. And in any event, Kim hasn't had a chance to 
chance. I saw the old one. The old one. And, yeah. and you had comments. You did. At the site walk, we had a bunch walk. of We talked about adding right. in some. So you didn't okay, make so the changes we suggested at the site walk. Can make a suggestion? Yeah. That's the, that's, the answer is yes. You didn't make those changes. Let's change to the screen. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's go ahead and, and do, uh, do the presentation anyway, and then we'll make our comments and see where we go from there at the end. So if you could maybe, let's see, we've given this um, about 40. 40, 45 minutes. If you could hold your presentation to like 15 minutes or so, we could then have questions and comments from the board and our consultants, and then open it up for comments from the public. That's, that's, are you going to be making the presentation? I'm going to do part of it. Trevor is actually going to start off yourselves. with, with the, Do you want me to introduce the, the team sure. to start? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for letting us be here. It's been, uh, a long time coming, and it's been a very exciting process. Grant, this is the first time we've ever done anything quite like this, and it's been an incredible learning curve. And we've enjoyed every um, every step of the way. Um, we always <laughs> are you pulling our legs. Well, I'm, I'm actually really serious. Um, I find this fascinating as a young entrepreneur. I, I I I look at this as being you know quite a very the bureaucratic mess. It's uh it's been it's been a lot of fun. So that being said. Um, this is my business partner, Brian uh, Whittemore. Um, we're going to be presenting on behalf of Ogilvy's, represented by Kevin Whittemore behind me and my wife, Lisa. And then Peter Gammy is our civil uh, engineer. All right, and just to interrupt you for a second. Yeah. We are, I'm Al Ingela, the chairman of the board. I'm David Mendelson. I'm Sue Zacharias. Steve Alpenheimer. Roy Chalabash. And Betsy Ware is the new planner. Been here Five days. Five days. Five days. Okay. That would be. So, um, we are um, Pure Solutions is the name of our company. We are currently occupied, um, occupying part of 75 Warren Avenue. It's also occupied by Weston Landscape um, and uh, Ogilvy's. Uh, Ogilvy's operates their um, oil business, lumber trucks out of the site. Um, they've owned the land since the early 1920s. Um, the idea behind uh, the proposed site is to um, continue to further organize the three businesses, um, defining space for operation, uh, improve daily site efficiencies, um, and really it's about the overall uh, improvement uh, to the site. Uh, Ogilvy's hardware, um, is um, you know operating their their oil trucks and their their lumber trucks out of the site. A lot of their operations are solely contained to this building right here, Weston Landscape, um, which is also using 75 Warren Avenue. Um, it's really site storage for their truck fleet and other landscaping equipment. Um, there's a little bit of indoor storage in that north building as well. Um, they have been using the site for a little over 20 years. Uh, and there's no real, there's no changes at all um, to to their operations based on this proposal. It really is again just trying to organize the site uh, further. Um, and then there's Pure Solutions, which is Brian and myself. Um, we are operating now for nine years out of the site. Um, we have we are a service company that provide organic mosquito and tick control to roughly 700 plus customers in the Western area. Um, we have a fleet of um, five trucks, we arrive at 7 a.m. in the morning, uh, we leave at um, 7.30, we don't come back to the site during the day, we return to the site between 4 and 5, um, and that is Monday through Friday. Um, again, you know, the, the idea behind this is to really create more defined areas for these three businesses that have been operating on this site for nine plus years, um, you know, obviously continuing with all of these for, for a very long time here. Um, you know, real improvements that we're looking to make are drainage improvements, reduced runoff, uh, as well as improved water quality, uh, reorganization and structure of the existing site, which I've you know, discussed a couple times, and the ability to move equipment and some vehicles into existing buildings 
um, and our proposed buildings to, to actually get some of that um, parking area inside and contained. Um, the current conditions of Pure, we're operating, um, we're not increasing the number of trucks. Um, we are um, really just trying to get both locations. Currently, have, we have a location at 582 Boston Post Road. You've probably seen our smart car um, on the Post Road. Uh, that's kind of our front of the house operations. Um, and then our field specialists are, um, are operating out of, out, out of this site. So the idea is to, in efforts to continue our company culture and growth to bring everybody uh, inside um, and to really make our operation um, more efficient. Um, the, the office operation as of now, we have four full-time office personnel that make up the customer service, sales, and marketing divisions of our company. Uh, this includes the two owners, which is Brian and myself. Uh, and our office hours are from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, the office personnel will arrive in the morning, park the cars in the building. Uh, customers do not visit the office. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be no real outside traffic coming in from, from our clients um, in the Western area. Uh, the proposed building is 5,000 square feet with a 2,500 square foot locked office space. The building will contain all daily operations of Pure Solutions. Uh, the proposed color is sandstone, which I've um, put in the, the packet for you, uh, and with the blue trim. And that is in efforts to keep with the Oldbies tradition of color, um, and they are using blue to accent uh, their brand. Um, and again, the color palette is in the back of the packet for you to look at. Um, one of the things that came up at the site block was fire code. Um, I've spoken with um, Weston uh, Town Fire Inspector, and there are no required sprinklers uh, for the building. Uh, we will have smoke and carbon, carbon monoxide detectors in the building, but there are no uh, required sprinklers based on the square footage we fall underneath the required um, requirements for that. Uh, in terms of water, uh, one of the really unique um, aspects of our business that we've put in place since the beginning is our rainwater collection system. We have um, multiple 2,100 gallon tanks that we collect all of our rainwater off of the um, roof of the north building there. Um, and we're filling those up every time it rains and we dilute our organic solutions um, that we then go out and service properties with, which is for organic mosquito and tick control. So since day one, we actually haven't used any valuable drinking water from the, from the town of Weston. We are super pumped about that aspect of our business and we continue uh, to make that commitment uh, in, in adding um, one additional tank in the proposed building to be able to um, you know, collect the water coming off of the new uh, building. Uh, roof, roof line. Um, in terms of water for the building, there's water service that comes directly down Warren Avenue. We want to be connecting to that. We don't have a huge water um, uh, demand. Uh, really, it's just for going to be for sinks and, and flushing toilets. Um, in terms of stormwater management and drainage, Peter's put in place a pretty detailed, a very detailed um, diagram for that. So if you want to you know, take a minute to go over that, yeah. and we can kind of get into that. Sure. Let me just back up just quickly because I think traffic was a big issue. The existing uh, traffic um, for Pure Solutions, five employees, five trucks, somewhere between 20 and 25 trips per day. Western Landscape, they've got 20 employees, 20 trucks. You're looking at total trips today, somewhere between 90 and 100. Um, and then you have uh, all of these. Um, they've got three, first three people uh, with six trucks, but there's only two people that drive the trucks, so roughly 12 trips per day. The bottom line is there's somewhere between 30 and 40, 130 and 140 trips today. And then the only increase in trips is the four office uh, personnel, personnel that will be coming. So they're going to add AM to PM trips, eight, they go to lunch, maybe another four trips, total 12 trips. So today you've got 130 to 140 trips. After the building gets put in and it moves in, you have an additional 10 to 12 trips per day. Um, so it's not, it's not as if they're moving this enormous fleet to, to this site. So I just wanted to make that seemed to be a, a, one of the key issues. So you're increasing traffic by 10%? Uh, less than 10%. Hey, well, well, back up. Um, I, I see two 
two parking patterns. Yeah. Could you yep. just run yep. through those? This, yeah, and, and it's, it's just, this is the existing, and right now it's it's pretty random that cars just sort of park. All of this area is, is, is open gravel parking. How many cars? Uh, roughly 20 employee cars, and there's roughly 20 uh, actual trucks that Western Landscape uses. And then you've got all of these that has uh, a couple personal cars, and they all park all of the vehicles inside, actually. So, um, and then you've got everything here. really self-contained to that middle building, which is the truck garage, and has operated it as a truck garage for many years. And, and then you have um, here Solutions, which, which they operate out of the back here, uh, and they've got their five employees, so they have five vehicles coming and going, AM and PM. So it's just it's just schematic to kind of represent the type of thing. And there's there's a lot of other equipment. There's um, uh, the, the, the shed here, and there's bins that are out around. So what the idea is to uh, you know they put all their plows here. Once Pure Solutions moves out of here, Western Landscape will have all of this space, and they'll be able to put a lot of their plows and all of that equipment inside. So it's actually going to clean up the site significantly. So this plan is just trying to, again, we're not going to stripe it because a lot of this is all um, gravel. But this is the type of layout. You get uh, you know, 20 uh, Western Landscape trucks. Some of them have trailers on the back. Uh, so, you know, some layout like this. Inside the new facility, um, as Trevor pointed out, they'll be able to keep their five trucks inside the facility. When they take them out, the um, the uh, employees will be able to, to park inside or some parking on the outside here. Uh, I'm confused. You just said five trucks. Are you getting an additional truck? There's, there, there was, you had four you and you four. added one more. Yeah, so it's currently there today. So. Okay. And yeah, so we, so we just purchased the fifth. We you. just yeah. purchased the fifth truck. So we wanted to show that. How do those trucks and trailers maneuver at the end of the driveway? These guys are incredible truck drivers. This I mean, what they do. this is what they do. I mean, they can get a trailer into the tightest space, um, and they do it all day, all throughout Weston. And when they Lots come of in, times the, the vehicle will come in this way. They'll pull right here, and then they'll back the trailer in like that. It's impressive. And where did their cars go in this scenario? Employees' cars for Weston. So it's going to be kind of the same scenario that we're proposing for Pure, which was what we already do is they pull a truck out and then they put their personal car into that space um, to really keep with the organization of, of the site. Um, and that's, you know, the whole idea behind this is to really start to clean up um, what has been kind of a, a free-for-all, if you will, of parking where you can. Um, and by, you know, putting the proposed building in, we really start to define space as well as open up a lot of that northern barn area for, for equipment. And, and stuff, um, you know, to be able to really get that nice structure on the site. Um, so this is a civil site plan. Uh, the new building is going in right here. Uh, electric will come off a utility pole underground and run into the side of the building here. Uh, there's, there's, as Trevor mentioned, there's an existing water line that comes down that services the residential. And is there water in this building? Um, in old homes, yeah. yeah. So the and so we'll tap into that. As you mentioned, there's very little demand. It's basically a bathroom and a kitchen. A kitchen. Kitchen ads. Kitchen ads. Yeah. Um, the, sink. the bathroom will have a, uh, a a line coming out to a septic tank and then to a pump chamber, which is going to be pumped up to a soil absorption system up in this area because of the high groundwater. Uh, it had to be raised, and that's. A retaining wall to enable that to be put up here. Bill Murphy uh, designed the system. He submitted plans to the Board of Health. Um, he believes that, that although they have the only reason they haven't been approved yet is because the Board of Health wants a, um, a wall to be actually designed by a PE. So that, that has to be done, but everything else should be should be all set there. Okay, and just to let you know, that's another re reason why we get to continue the hearing because we couldn't sign off on this until the so Board of Health is signed off, just to let you know. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, 
water or the Brazil gas in, out in this area. Um, and uh, so the storm drainage, what I've done is I've, 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 take, I've created three different systems. System one here, two here, and then the third one is more of a water quality improvement system, which is collecting uh, pavement runoff uh, and going through catch basins with hoods, sumps and hoods, and then bringing it around to a dry well. Um, when I looked at this whole site, we've got roughly just under two acres of total site, and this, the area that we're actually impacting is roughly 7,800 square feet, so a, real, a very small portion of the total um, parcel. So I looked at what are we actually changing on this site, and essentially what we're looking at is a new building, of course, of 5,000 square feet. We've got this sort of hatched area here, which it today is gravel, and we have this little hatched area here, which is also gravel, and we're going to pave these two sections, which will match up to the existing pavement, which comes through here. So the, the new changes going from essentially a dense gravel parking lot to an impervious surface is the building and these two areas here. So I looked at, um, I did a hydrocad looking at existing conditions, uh, what's the runoff today, looked at the proposed conditions going to the impervious surface and what the runoff characteristics, peak volume, uh, peak rate of flow and volume compared the two and said this is what I need to mitigate for this, the change. So I got that number and looked at ways we could best mitigate it. I'm going to put a typical storm protect chamber system underneath the parking lot here in this crushed stone. We're going to capture two areas of existing roof runoff. This building here with downspouts, we're going to capture that and a portion of this building here. And that alone uh, completely mitigates the increased peak rate of runoff. It only captures about half of the volume that we're looking for, but it, it, it solves the peak rate. The, this system back here, which collects the, the roof runoff, the roof runoff collects in the gutter, it's going to go down to those tanks. Are those 21 or 2,400 gallons? 21 each. 2,100 gallon tanks, three of them, that they use for their business. When those tanks and if those tanks fill up, they will overflow into the system that I have in the back here. That system um, reduces peak rate of flow again from, from um, two year up to about 50 year, and it stores another 640 cubic feet of runoff. So the combination of volume storage here and volume storage here mitigates that delta between pre versus post runoff. Um, are you talking about lighting? I can't. Well, yeah. okay, I'm about lighting. Yeah. Sure. Um, I have to look the Does somebody have a lighting plan? Yep, we have a lighting plan. We submitted it in the original proposal. Um, we are using dark sky compliant lighting. I'm going to use this. Okay, so there's a new building there. Do um, you want to describe these lights? Let's see. Um, the table has existing lighting um, here. Total existing lighting on the site today is uh, 48,190 lumens. The after there's a number of lights that are going to be taken down and some new ones put up around the new uh, building. After that's all done, the the total lumens is 41,494. So a decrease of roughly four four thousand, no, seven thousand, seven thousand lumens. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple big culprits on the property, a couple outdated, um, bigger lights that produce, you know, a lot of lumens, and those are the ones that are going to be coming down. They're big spotlights, um, and we'll be replacing, um, or actually, on the new building, it's going to be all dark sky compliant uh, lighting. So these these light fixtures here, and they're going to be removed, uh, 
and then the, the new ones going in around the building here. On the back of the building too? Yeah, the door. <coughs> and with the, I, I count several fixtures on the back. Yeah, there's I, all the all the triangles are are the dark sky compliant fixtures on the building. Um, and, you know, the key here was to um, try to reduce current lumens on the property. Why are you putting the fixtures in the back other than for the man door? Um, well, for security purposes, we decided to put fixtures on the back. Um, the lighting on this site has kind of always been security lighting. We don't operate really at night at all. Um, so putting, giving some type of security for, for the building is important to us. So we're just going to go down well, here. I've got... kind of are they uh, motion detectors? Um, I mean, are they on all the time? They're, they're on at during the evening, yep. So this is the RAD lighting report in detail. If you want to look at it, you're welcome to have a copy of this. Details of all the fixtures, um, lumen as well. Um, I did uh, submit this in the plan. Um, so you're welcome to have a copy of that as well. Um, but yep, they'll go on it at night. And um, we'll stay on all night? Yep. <clears throat> yep. I saw a cool light diagram in here somewhere. Right. Is there a reason they couldn't be motion yeah. sensitive? Or it's just, um, yeah. we could, we could you know, that. I think the concern is so there are no problem. 16 like in the room. Right. But, motion, so. but wait a second, you just so said it wouldn't be a problem to just put those, yeah, I mean, exactly. it's just for security. It wouldn't be a problem at all to, to make an adjust yeah. Yeah, adjustment. Yeah, because I mean, that, we're would, not that would make stone. us a little happier. Okay, yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. Right? Especially the neighbors happier. Yeah. Just because. Pardon me? The neighbors? There's not the many, there's no one on, no. 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 there's no one. can see the back of the building. Where is the water department in relationship to this? It's on, it's this, down here. You don't have a, a plan that shows all the buildings around there. So it is sort of just directly, I mean, if I'm taking the top of that as being north, I'm taking the bottom of it as being south, the, the water department's sort of south. So yeah, north south, yeah. Right there. Yeah. yeah, so there would be, you know, it's just like any time you can decrease lighting. Yeah. We have Living no problem nice. making That's adjustments like that. All right. Yeah, I've made a note and we'll, we'll submit that. Thank you. Landscaping? Landscaping, yes. Um, you got a copy for you, Betsy? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'd be more than happy to make multiple copies of the packet that I've submitted for all of you to have a copy of the packet. I don't want to tell them. So, this is what we presented before. There are, are a series of uh, trees and shrubs going in, uh, rhododendrons. Uh, Arrowwood and uh, arbor bodies, I guess. There's a total of five, a total of ten sizes, three to four feet. Where are they? And they're, they're located all along this edge. There's a line of them? Yeah. There's a lot of uh, brush, you know, uh, medium sized wooded um, uh, ground cover there. So you know, this would be in addition to that existing. Um, I think your concern was the view coming across this direction here. And so what we could do is we could actually pull some of these up and just cluster more of that up in the bottom of How tall are they? These are um, three to four feet in, in height. Yeah. Obviously. Because it's small, you're not going to pretty much with a three foot high yeah. plant. Isn't Steve from Western Landscape? Isn't he around there all the time? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very obvious. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, I guess it's what we're trying, I, all in what we're trying to accomplish here. I mean, if, if I mean, I don't know who's going to ever really be down at this dead end, um, you know, that would see, you know, again, if we were to put extra plants in here. Um, the people in the, in the house, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Y
Yep. Yes. Yeah. Now the, the the picture's turned. Um, and the, I I said before that the water house or the um, water park yeah, house is over here. It's actually down more down over this way. The way the yep. um, thing comes out. Yeah. So what I was pointing out was where we have this sort of screening going mm -hmm. right along here. We could pull more of that down and cluster in this area too. Or for that matter, we could put some. If they would allow us, put some across on that. Anyway, this is one of those things that. Um, yeah. URLA has to talk with, come up with a little bit of a plan and, and run it by him. And okay. she's happy with it. Okay. All right. um, when, we're on, when we were on the sidewalk, we talked a little bit about what happens inside the, the garage. Yeah. Um, one of the questions we had was what happens with water that that you're probably going to have drains in it. In the building, what, is, the, is, the, is, is that going to t take care of, for example, some of the organic material that you're mixing? Or is there going to be an overflow? Uh, are you going to be washing vehicles inside the building? I mean, so, yes, there will be, to answer your question, yes, there will be floor drains in the building. They will have, we find out they will have to go to a tight tank. And Where's that going to be? I think it'll be just outside, right in this area. Can you show it yet on your plans? No, because it hasn't been, we haven't gotten to that level of construction drawings, basically. You haven't. Um, but I, I mean, I think we're going to want to know. It's, a, it it's, a, it's a below grade. It's not a surface. It's, I, I it's know. below grade. Yeah. And that's all you're going to see is a cover. Yeah. Um, well, we like it on the plan. There's a special yeah. flood hazard area near there as well. Has what? Special flood hazard area near there as well. It's elevation 135, I think. The floodplain, the western floodplain. 135, and we're up at 153. So you're out of the floodplain? We're out, yes. And where's the nearest wetlands? The wetlands are actually, you can see them up here, across the back here. Okay, so that's so we're outside of the 100. That's the 100 foot buffer, that, that dark line? The, the, yes. That's this line right through here. And we've reviewed this with Michelle. So you don't have to go to the con comp? Correct. But we are making significant improvements to the drainage and collecting water quality. So if your, your organic material that you use to you know, dilute it with water, yeah. it's water soluble mm -hmm. and, and stuff, um, it's presumably very concentrated. Mm -hmm. um, have you, do you have to go to the fire department or anybody in case there's a spill and they have to clean up stuff? Or what happens if something like that happens. Right. One, one of the delivery tanks ruptures. We're dealing, well in concentrate form, we're dealing with um, you know, no more than a 55 gallon drum of concentrate um, on the property at any given time. That's what we order the product in uh, and, and the concentrate level that it, or volume that it comes in. Um, so we're not dealing with astronomical amounts of uh, volume here that you know would have the ability to. No, I understand. To, to, what to are the risks of this material? It's an EPA exempt um, essential oil blend. Um, it's a national national organic program compliant product, um, and we mix it. I mean, it's it come, it's about seventy seven dollars uh, a gallon, so it's very very expensive. Um, all the materials that the product is contained um, in um, are compliant with the oils that are in the product, like wintergreen oil and peppermint oil. I would assume oil. all that. I'm right. So there. What What's the risk in case something happened? There, you know, there is if no if there is a risk. fire. I mean, there's it there's no, it's a no more risk product. No combustion. Um, okay. To answer your question, that yeah. one specifically, there's no combustible uh, components to the product, so we don't have to worry about it being a fire hazard. Um, we do, you know, take extra steps to, um, again, where it's so expensive per gallon. Um, we have uh, a um, a system around the 55 gallon drum so that if anything were to happen, if it were to leak or, you know, the for some reason it were to be punctured, it actually catches and collects um, the product in concentrate form. The um, solution in dilution in diluted uh, at a diluted rate, it's uh, two ounces per gallon of water, so it's very very small, um, and it uh, you know it's, it's a product that has 
interesting characteristics where it won't kill pollinators and butterflies and bees and that kind of thing, but it has you know very specific targets on ticks and mosquitoes. And to um, the you know the you know the spillage point or the refilling point, or do we have to empty things out? Once we we you know allocate a schedule for the day, we route it through our computer software. We fill up our 200 gallon tanks. The trucks leave the bays. They go in these service accounts. They come back. And nine times out of ten, those tanks are completely empty. Sometimes there's a little bit of a residual, but we're not having to like dump it out, put it back in, um, and so we're able to really move through product uh, very easily. Um, if there's any type of situation where we're moving, where we have to make a move, um, typically we do that when the tanks are empty, um, so that it's just for a weight purpose. If we don't have heavy equipment to be moving um, you know, that much weight. So in other words, you know, it, it, the product is very contained. Um, on the property in, 55, in the 55 gallon drum in concentrated form. Once it gets diluted and mixed in the trucks, those trucks are out on the road uh, servicing accounts. Okay, uh, consultants, Dave, anything to say at this point? Or? No, I was okay with the stormwater, and then you stole my thunder about the tight tank. And, you know, <laughs> Pete, I don't think you'd, yeah, you'd need to maybe just. Allocate space for it because it's kind of the same area you thought of concentrating the planting to where you pointed for the tight tank. So, I know, just the conflict. I, I mean, I, you know, I, it's good to be just a fiberglass tank on the ground, but allocate an area for it so then yeah, the plant, we don't have the, well, the plantings that we want mm -hmm. can't go here, type of thing. Right. Okay. How, how large a tank do you think they should be? It, it, it's up to them. They're going to really never want to have to empty it because it gets really expensive so it's going to be like a cost benefit thing you know like the bigger tank they put in the less they'll have to empty it uh, the first time anyone ever washes their car in there they have to pay for the the tank to get pumped out will be the last time they ever <laughs> let anyone wash their car in there it, it's it's part of the plumbing code so it has to go in um, I, I have them in like rural police stations and stuff like that and it, it's like 500,000 gallons will, will last them and would never have to be pumped out for more than God. It, again, it's if someone screws up and like, you know, leaves a hose dip on or something like that. Okay. Wow. Kim, I, I mean, I think we're looking for some advice on spring planting. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you could get that to us. We'll continue the hearing and then talk about that later. Um, I have a couple of questions about the site. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, here's the deal. The, the site has no frontage. Um, does it front on a road? The only access to the site is over an easement. By the way, the driveway is not in the easement. The driveway was there before the easement was well, put somebody, in place. Somebody screwed the easement up there. Right, um, but we're. Okay. It's, it's, I just needed to make that point. Okay. Okay. And then the but third the thing. I'm sorry, the easement's been there since prior to 1920, I believe. Mm -hmm. Can I have your name for the record, please? I'm sorry, Sarah Ratty. Whichever came first, it's chicken and egg, but it, it, the two don't, aren't contiguous. And the, the third thing is, it's a site with two uses. It's a, it's, it's a site with a resident, it's a commercial zone with a residence on it. Um, and so my questions are, and maybe we need <coughs> town council's advice on this, are we okay conditioning a, a, what amounts to an increase in the nonconformity uh, by conditioning this new building for the, the nonconforming, it's, it's nonconforming with respect to use, it's not conforming with respect to frontage, and probably, I, my guess is possibly with respect to access. So, what process do we should we go through, if any, to deal with those? The, those questions. So my, my recommendation would be to talk to town council and see. Why don't I talk with the building commissioner first? That's fine. And then we can go from there. I think 
your regulations state that they have to go through the site plan before they go through the ZBA process. So right. they, the they planning go. board could certainly deal with the site plan issues and then condition it upon getting any and all necessary zoning relief from the zoning board. And yeah. therefore, you're not dealing with those issues. The ZBA, who is the rightful owner of those issues, would be dealing with them. Yeah, so we'd have to make our <coughs> conditions contingent on whatever variances they might need if they need it. I mean, right now it's grandfathered, but with the new building... But it's an expansion of a non That's an expansion of at least two non-conformities. Um, and I can understand that... This is why it would be interesting to talk to the building inspector. I can understand kicking it over to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the frontage question and, and the easement question. I've got a question about the use, because the ZBA can't issue a variance with respect to use. So that's why I was suggesting town council. Why don't I talk with John? We'll come up with our list. We'll run it by legal counsel, yeah. if needed. OK. I just want to be sure we're not you know, um, off the reservation with respect to what we what we can and can't well, you're only looking at it in terms of site plan review. We are. But before we issue a decision, I'd like to know if we're okay. able to issue a decision. Okay. okay. All right. Any questions or comments from anybody, anybody in the audience? Yes. I have a question. Did you I, just I would, identify yourself? Uh, Alan Worth, uh, 17 Warren Lane. Um, the area um, here, these are resi residences on Warren Lane. And there's no, and in this area you don't really talk about, I think, I mean this is existing use. It looks like it's just, right now they just have stuff, uh, you know, stone storage there. And I think this here is where the existing offices are. Um, but, and I think you said that there's going to be, this is where the... Um, right, and I'm wondering if there's any provisions for screening. Because right now, the residential area kind of looks right into this. And is, is there anything about <coughs> screening? Well, okay. Um, Alan, what, one... One problem here is that we can't get we can't place any conditions outside the site limits. So I don't know where we put the screening. It's everything's right up against the yeah. the sight lines. So um, that's you know that's kind of a tough one for us. Well, and, and is as we said, it's pre-existing, pre-existing, uh, apparently non-conforming, but. People have always accepted it, and you know, in some ways, it's uh, we always feel that it's nice to be able to have some commercial areas in Westland where it's not so easy to do. Uh, but you know, it, we wonder where the limits are. Right. Can I say one thing? You know, we, we totally understand that kind of the back part of that lot is, is a little unorganized. Um, so, you know, part of the site plan with the proposed building is to help organize that, that area. Um, we want it, you know, as much as the neighborhood probably wants it. Um, because it's going to make us all be more efficient. Um, and so by putting in the proposed building, getting some of those trucks out of that area and then organizing what's already there, I think it's going to be a better visually looking site uh, for the neighbors. Yeah. 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 You'll you'll still have the view, but maybe it'll be a little bit of it's going to be a clean, yeah, yeah it's going to be a little bit of a clean, yeah, it'll still view. be a commercial site, but um, maybe just less disorganized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. 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 
building, a shed building that Ogilvy's has. Which one is that? Yeah, it's the old building. building. Yeah, shed. It's kind of like, yeah, it's like a... It's screening. It was the old coal, coal storage yeah. building or storage. <coughs> so they're in that building. We currently operate out of part of that, and then Weston operates out of part of that building now. And then Ogilvy's keeps the other part as a shed. And then Ogilvy's has the middle, middle building, and that's where the truck's area is. So right. by us so moving out two, two buildings, two storage buildings, one more primarily lumber and the other one. So oh, that's on, it's on the front that's yard. Not, that's the main on the main site. That's at thirty five more after. Yeah, that's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <coughs> this is way back. This is yeah. good far farther back. Yeah. Way back. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, I'm Kara Fleming. Um, I live at two Warren Lane. And I met the dead end that no one cares about. Um, I just, first, I, you have to please respect that this is a neighborhood. Um, there are children, a lot more children than there used to be down there. Um, we've got new families moving in with the, um, lots more families. You even have children that live down in Gunkup Lane now. So this area is used for kids. Um, on their bikes and to run around, but there are certain times of the day where we got to pull them out of the road because there are a lot of trucks, and there are a lot of trucks. So much so that the police have even said that Warren Avenue is a very dangerous road. We have no sidewalks. And our buses don't come down in the afternoon for the middle school and high school. They have to walk down that road, and you know that there are two blind turns. Also, with the... Um, the Affordable Housing Trust putting in the new housing in the superintendent building and the water department in 6668 Avenue of 6668 Warren Ave. We've got more families, we've got more cars going down there. We also have the major trailhead for Jericho Forest and there's gonna be the rail trail. So we've got even more cars coming down there. And you say that you want to expand your business. I don't want to get in the way of that. I appreciate that, and I really appreciate that you're cleaning up that area, too. But um, I just would like to see a lot of these groups start working together to try and solve these issues. Because um, a lot of people recognize the fact that we've got a serious traffic issue, but everyone's just saying it, and no one's helping us with it. And I don't think it's fair to put it all just on the neighborhood. So. It's wanted to let that know but that you say that your cars are coming back and forth twice a day. We're seeing trucks coming back and forth a lot more than just that. And it's not just your trucks. It's right. also Western Landscape. It's also Ogilvy's. And it's just, and then the customers as well that go just to, to Ogilvy's. It's, it's really a lot of traffic. And we're getting hit with even more. Yeah, I mean... Here's the thing, um, Kara, we, ca we can condition things on the site. Mm -hmm. we could, if there was a big increase in traffic as a result of what they're proposing to do, we can take a look at that, they're, but they're only increasing by a couple of, like, I think you said four cars. Um, but we can't condition anything off the, the boundaries of the site. So we couldn't impose conditions on the road, for example. Um, we're sort of hamstrung that way. I think the ZBA has control on those issues. ZBA could do it. Yeah. Maybe the thing is the ZBA. That's, yeah. Could I ask related questions to that? So, um, Trevor, you mentioned the five trucks that you have currently. So the building that you're building, it could take up to how many trucks? I mean, there's, there's four garage bays, um, okay. and each um, depth-wise, you know, it's, it's 50 feet. Um, so each truck is about, I don't know, 17 feet or so okay. uh, in length, so you could fit uh, about deep. about three deep, right. uh, three deep in each in each bay, uh, so that's twelve vehicles. Um, the some and, some and of the area will be designated for kind of shop space right. to keep equipment and stuff. 
Um, so we'll be kind of taking away some of that parking area. Um, the majority of it will be parking, of course. Um, but we are also at a position now with uh, having that fifth vehicle uh, where we are, um, you know, under capacity in terms of being able to meet our current um, demand for, for business. So uh, we do have the ability to grow um, and without having to, you know, increase our, our vehicle or at this point in time. Yeah, I heard a nice plea out there for you guys to work together with the neighborhood and, people. And I'd like to maybe even bring old OVs, bring Western you know, right. landscaping into it. And you know, have a little I don't know, a little coffee, beer. Yeah. <laughs> well I, I want I want to touch on that a little bit. You know, you know I mean so that there is some coordination. Yeah. So it's more efficient if it's organized. So I totally it's, agree. It's one big not big even big it's it's safer in that too. Yeah, I mean we're you know we're committed um, you know, to provide a service to our clients um, with transparency. And we're also committed to coexisting uh, with the neighborhood. I mean, we have a lot of passion for the town of Weston, and specifically Oglebees because it's a family business. Um, and whatever we can do to work together, we totally will do that. You know, I don't know, you know where we go from this meeting to have that conversation. Um, again, this is new to, to Brian and I, but we're more than happy to have that conversation. I mean, you know, quick proposal, you know, maybe it's putting a couple of signs that say slow children. I mean, you know, making people aware. Yeah, and, and again, I'm just, I'm, I'm offering, you know, something up here um, to, uh, to, to try to change your phone numbers. Yeah, to try to get the, the, the thing. But, you, but also, it's, it is, it's three businesses, and it's, you know, the majority of that traffic is, is not our is not our business. So we'd be willing to, you know, bring the group together uh, if that's what we need. What's that? Yeah, sir. that's a good offer. Re Rebecca Gardner, uh, 16 Warren Place. Um, I appreciate that you've um, brought in the conversation about um, the private businesses to uh, reach out to the neighborhood, but it's also a responsibility of the town because um, with the Affordable Housing Trust coming in and developing the area, um, we, the town has to work on developing the potential for sidewalks as well, because one of the reasons for the affordable housing to be there is because of its proximity to town, which means that it's walkable to town center. And it is something that we have brought up with other um, groups within the town and everyone has basically passed us to another group. So I'm expressing Kara's frustration as well as the rest of the neighborhood. And I appreciate, you know, each time somebody says, yes, we're listening, we're listening, but it really isn't fair to just dump it on one particular group. I think everybody has to work together. It has to be the neighborhood. It has to be the town organizations, including sidewalk and, um, whatever they are, and the, um, the private businesses, please. It cannot just be dumped on one group. Wait, when, when you first mentioned the car, I was thinking to myself, this doesn't sound like a problem with open views, or this type of sense of problem with the road. Yes. Um, it, it, it is a problem with the road. It's not going to be a lot of traffic there, and we're going to have more traffic, more families, more anything else. So this is, I get exactly what you mean. This is a, this is a town issue. Yeah, because right. we've got, everybody is touching this. But, so Sarah's um, here, and uh, I'm sure when they come before us, <laughs> we all start on this. I mean, it is a town issue. That that road is, I think, substandard because I drove down it and was happy I made it down. It was a cool day. Yeah. 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 Right. But, Very but, cool. By, by the yeah. same token, you know, you know, you're all part of that neighborhood, and the, the more co cohesive your message is, whether it's to the board of selectmen. DPW, the sidewalk committees, whoever, the more cohesive that is, the stronger the message. Somebody needs to fund a traffic study, it seems to me. I mean, w one thing um, that I, I picked up on, w w w in the presentation, I was under the impression that there were going to be no more than five cars associated with this um, business, but actually, over the last several minutes, it, it occurs to me that if the business grows the way everybody would hope it would, it could be significantly more than five cars. It could be as, as many as 
perhaps 15 vehicles, I, twelve in the in the garage, and at least two two spaces, parking spaces outside. Um, so where do you come up with 15? Twelve in the garage and two outside. Vehicles. That's 14. But those, those are just spots. Those are just spots. Yeah. Those aren't going to be but they're, so they're not but spots they, where people would park. They potentially they could be, um, but we're not. Again, I think it's kind of laying out the land, you know, the best way we can. It's not. Well, how many would you we say? Have nine, we have nine. We have nine. We have nine employees that show up, and five of which replace their car for the day with one of our trucks. Um, so there's always there's nine vehicles parked in that building as proposed on the plan. But so what happens five or ten years down the road when you have ten trucks because business is good? Right. So, then so we have, have a total of So we're also in, we're in the process of um, opening up satellite locations in Mass. So we actually have a location on the vineyard. Uh, we also have a location in Chatham. Uh, and that's in efforts to help support that that business. But understood. But it would be helpful to, to have an idea of what you project the maximum number of cars to, will be right. connected with your facility right. as opposed to the current level. Well, for well, example, we did add us nine years to get to a point where we have five vehicles, um, and you know, that's kind of the growth that we're experiencing. We have been experiencing year to year, so, um, you know, again, it's maybe we double the vehicle size in another nine years. Um, but not necessarily in this location. Exactly. exactly. I mean, <laughs> so you, I, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that's reflecting the question. The question is, is the answer to the question that you, that you expect the maximum number of vehicles in, say, five years to be, what, what would you project? I would say we well, must have a business plan. So <laughs> we do have a business plan. Yeah. Um, we're executing that. Um, but I mean, what? So we can project, I guess, all day, right? But you want kind of like what's what's well, existing, well, if right? You, if, you, if you don't answer correctly, in five years we're going to put you in the stocks. Uh, it's just it's just yeah. a, a, a rough idea of where you think. So this goes back to all of us, kind of getting together, right, and like being a cohesive unit, like the neighbors and the yeah, business. It's different and the no, it's a different question. Okay. It's just a simple question. Okay. Yep. Where does your business plan say you're going to be in terms of vehicles on this site in, say, five years? In five it's years. It's the maximum employee that you can house in this building, in the building. I mean, you've got well, five in-house now. Capacity-wise. Don't look the drivers. Can you right. ten? Can you fit 30 in that building? Couldn't fit 30 in the building. Okay, so we're already maxed out at yeah. 30, so it's down from there. That's all he's asking. Is okay. just, what's the know, max what, number okay. of in-house? What the maximum employees? impact would be? So maximum impact would probably be doubling the size of the fleet and then doubling the size of the office personnel. So that would be how so many 10 days? office personnel it would be at that point. 8 office personnel and 10 trucks. 18. 18. 18. Versus versus nine, versus nine, nine. Right. and that's a top end. And that's the max capacity. That's the max capacity. Well, so that's the question you asked. Yes, yeah. it was the question I asked, and then how would that translate into vehicle trips a day? Um, you, you would double our. Yeah. So, yeah. so you were figuring it would be at about twenty-five. We say eighteen total. I thought you said 18. twelve. Twelve for the current. vehicle trips. That's oh, actually yeah. light, but that was for five. Yeah. That was yeah. That was, that was for five cars. That was for oh, that four. Wasn't for nine. Four. That was for nine. Four office personnel. But that's right, because five of them are already there, mm -hmm. right? So it was for five the four. More, right. So the increase, so the would, increase would be five thirteen. Trucks, and so it would be five new trucks. Is what we're talking about, and so four new, five new four five new. Well, we'd, we'd be doubling. We'd be doubling the number of trucks. Maybe ten. And what is it? So about 20 to 25 trips. Additional trips. Additional to 12. Additional it's time. So it's 35. But again, that's. And we can be out of business tomorrow, too. So, yeah, sure. Uh, but that's somebody else will be able to perhaps they provide us with their. 16. We can provide them with their vehicles. Yeah. Because it's getting. We, we have other things to do. I'm actually in the middle. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, so <laughs> that I can get this straight. 
what what would you like us to provide you so that we can get a proposal? Do you want you want us to outline with number of trips, doubling the size of our business over the course of the next nine years? Well, yeah. I mean, what is your projection for maximum um, occupancy of the building? Um, that's that's what we're asking. And what would that? How would that translate into vehicle trips? And then how how does that compare with existing vehicle trips? So we're trying to get a handle on how much more intense this use is going to contribute when you compare it with other new traffic that's going up and down Warren Avenue. I mean, I, listening to some neighbors that are pretty concerned that it's getting to be. And I guess in the immediate uh, time frame, looking at you know two to three years, we've got. Um, you know, five vehicle fleet now, I wouldn't assume that we would be increasing it much more than that. All right, well. But we can provide you with the just, numbers yeah, you know, that would be in helpful. written form if that, you know, can help. That was, I think it would be helpful for us to understand how this functions. Okay. I have a question because it really it's the whole site and the vehicles in the whole site. And they don't have the most vehicles, Western Training Landscape does. And my question is, what is the buy right use of the site and and what limitations can you put on on the site in terms of total number of vehicles uh, at, at the site you know not just them but also everybody else that's where I'm and also in uh, hours of operation that's where that I'm kind at. of thing what are the but we need to get some numbers first first I mean on, on to answer part of that Western landscape we had uh, we approached them with that. Um, and they've, uh, you know, been at the same size they've been at for the last 10 years. That was the answer we were given. Um, and they don't plan to grow anymore in terms of trucks. What they do is they replace out their old trucks with new trucks. Um, and they're not, they're not at a point right now in, I think, uh, Phil's career Phil's that he's trying to try yeah. expand geographically. Um, Instead of anything, he wants to reduce the size a little as he's getting older. So maybe your trucks have increased, but the neighbors have noticed a distinct increase in the number of trucks. Okay. There's also a lot more kids right. around now, right. which Same heightens trucks, the sensitivity. But they're, right. And they're a lot, right, a lot more right. children around. Yeah, they're just, they're, it's, yeah. they're not coming down in the morning and then leaving in the morning, and then coming back in the afternoon and leaving in the afternoon. They're up and down. Right. When we, it's were, weekends too. when we were talking about that that piece, we were talking specifically to our business. I we were talking yeah. to their business. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. just to clarify that. Yeah. With multiple businesses. One more question, then we're, we'll have to. Uh, Could I ask a few questions? Sure. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, cognizant of your time, but um, and just one last piece on the sort of the intensity of use. So then the, the last piece to figuring this out is, is would Ogilvy's be able to add tenants or otherwise reutilize the space that's now being used by your trucks? Because I, as I understand it, you now fill up your trucks in that back area. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. And so when you moved out of there, um, does that sort of open up new areas? Going to go in there. They're going to move into Yeah, it's part of the site cleanup. The they're going yeah. to yeah. take some of their things that are out, you know, snow plows and whatnot. Okay. Um, and, and part of that attempt to reorganize the yard, they're going to be, you know, storing their things in those bays. Okay. Um, so just to, uh, to I, I wrote a letter to the planning board on behalf of the Western Affordable Housing Trust. Um, I'm the chair of the Housing Trust. And it, we've sort of alluded to this, but so the housing trust has been working for a number of years on behalf of the town to look at the town-owned land that abuts immediately abuts this property, and the the easement that uh, is the source of access to this lot cuts across the town-owned land. So we're at the stage now. Um, you know, we've been using town-appropriated money to look at feasibility and design studies, and we're now at the point where we're trying to develop construction plans for the whole um, property, which straddles Warren Ave, and um, the, the superintendent's house is the, the, the existing one family that's going to be converted to a two family that sits sort of high atop the hill and looks straight out at the area that is the proposed um, building. Um, and so I don't know, I'm a little unclear as to the scope of what you look at and the legal standards and what the BZA looks at, but just 
bullet points of like our big concerns, um, just in terms of as the as the future hopefully a butter to the project, um, and and for our property to be a residential use, um, two two sets of tenants living in this house. Um, they now, if they were living there today, would be looking out at trees. Um, yes, they'd be looking out at some sort of um, disorganized parking on a gravel area, but um, not really clearly in their line of sight. And with the proposed building, um, first, I'm not sure of the exact height, but I imagine it's going to be at least one story. 25 feet. 25 feet high. Um, it's sited so far at the front as to be uh, as to have a real impact on the abutter, whereas the back edge of this whole parcel looks out on um, abandoned railroad uh, tracks. And so just a big question is why on earth site it there when if you're if you're if you're if you should be caring about the impact on the neighborhood, is there any way that this could be sited at the back of the lot? Um, and when I say the back, I mean as we're looking at this plan, the right, uh, the right upper corner. Maybe, maybe there's not. Is there any way it could be sited further back so that again, um, there's less of an impact? Because it's a little hard to judge. But as I, uh, from the sidewalk, it looks like all the people living in that one apartment will be staring out of the building with lights that. You know, motion detector lights, I think, would make a difference, but with the amount of wildlife we have around, I know our neighbor's motion detector lights are on constantly. Um, so if there's quite a bit of lighting on that building, that's, that's another issue. You may be removing lighting in the back, which is great, I think, and it may help. Alan, I'm not sure, your neighborhood in the back there may be impacted by that removal of lighting. No? Um, but the, the lighting is moving to a place where not only the superintendent's house, but also the brick building um, at least one of the apartments, I, I think, will be looking out at that. Um, so, um, intensity of use, the siting of the building, um, and um, gosh, there was one other thing. Ah, yes, the, the, the one other thing which raised a couple questions just about the increased noise from what might be going on in that building, and I, I don't know if that's true, but so the rain collection basins, do, is there like, when you dilute your material, is there like some process that there are people who are like emptying stuff out or there's, machines emptying stuff out? Or is there it is an electric pump um, okay. that runs, that pumps the water mm -hmm. out of the uh, 2,400 gallon tanks and into um, the uh, trucks, mm -hmm. the, the products, the uh -huh. mix. Um, but that pump is uh, one that we've taken out of, uh, it was used previously in a home to pump water. Uh, okay. A little worth of well water in a, in a home. So, I mean, it's not, you wouldn't be able to hear it. Okay. Um, it's not a noisy pump. Okay. It's not like it's a big, you know, a, we're not running, you know, huge mixers or anything of that okay. nature. Um, and then if the, if the bays of the garage were open during the day while people were working inside, um, technicians building? would be gone at that point. Um, okay. Theory would be <coughs> more uh, noise canceling than. Our operations, which take place outside currently. Um, Got it. So you're not putting a generator on the building, are you? We're not. No. No. We looked at, yeah, we looked at it, and we just said it was this isn't necessary for for our operations. Got it. If it snows, we don't have anybody coming in. Or, right. Yeah. Want people to be safe. So. And to the extent that we get to this, you know, in terms of the screening, um, you know, as I was mentioning, three feet, three foot rhododendrons won't help much um, along a 25 foot building. So, um, yeah. Do you might, you know, I, might I propose that there's a long line of town property that the town could put plantings on to block what they don't want to see and from their angle? Well, I mean, usually the people who are changing the, well, the impact. Well, there's going to be a two family house there, right? There's been a house there for uh, right, and they have any problems in the backyard. Well, but, but they the haven't single, had a the building in the backyard. It's a family lot. It's going to change. Make sure you let people talk to us that before anybody. Yeah, could you sorry about that. Like, but could you identify yourself? I'm sorry. Uh, I did it earlier. Yes. Kevin Woodmore. Kevin Woodmore. Yes, from Old Yes, I own that lot. 
I also, I mean, just as I, I understand what you're saying, I think as a practical matter, because of the way the land dips down, mm -hmm. I don't know that we, I mean, have to plant a 30 foot tree to be able to. Yeah, on, actually on my, on my property, you'd have to. On your property, you wouldn't have to. Because you're, 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 you're higher than down on us. Um, you're the, talking the, about the, the house lands, right here, the right? Land slopes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So right, right. you could put some right. screening plants right there, which is not to say I'm not concerned about where this building is and how difficult it is to screen this building from this house. Um, I do think it's an issue. And Kim, are you okay with our providing? I thought you were usually not okay with our providing. They were I, I heard yeah, our providing being proposed. Um, what about the what about the footprint re relocation? Is that what what was it that, that made you put the, the building right in that corner? It, are there constraints that we that we were not that we don't know about? Well, I think it's to again kind of divide the property into sections where you know there is dedicated space to each tenant that's operating at that in that property. Um, if you were to put this building. Uh, what was maybe suggested here, uh, it would restrict all access to this front side of the building, and that's where Western Landscape operates out of. What about moving it down Slide feet or so? Okay. You move it down, you're moving it closer. No, no, to the, no, 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 the other way. To the right. Yeah. Down, yeah. Along, the, down yeah. along the setback right line. Yeah. You start to bottleneck a little bit um, for the trucks that are trying to maneuver in and out um, of the site as well. And is this, you have the, is it the wetland? Right. Buffer line. Um, you uh, you also run into a it's just a setback line. <laughs> He's right on the two setbacks right now. He's, it, one corner of the building is on one setback, and the other corner is on the other setback. But so if you move off the setback a little bit, that side setback. I mean, it's worth looking at. I think I think the point. If you, if you shift this down, you're starting to pinch this this bottom back here. Also. The more you shift this way, the less available space you have for, yeah, for parking for operations and everything else. And were, you, were you just shoehorning the cars in before? Could you just were you just no no there, in? there's some there's there's some extra room there. Yeah. On the other hand, if it's shifted down, what will end up on the other side, the left of that building, will be the parking spaces. Well, maybe not. Where are the drugs? Well, the but building? if they're already like, like the the oh, oh, they're 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 yeah. And what about, right and what about the garage the doors for the other half of the For the, for the uh, western uh, the barn? There's, there's bays on either side, um, or openings on either side on the top part of that building. Um, there's a garage door on the bottom part. Uh, on the left side, there's also bays on the right side running all the way up. And then there's... Um, Sounds like there's bays on both. No. There's there's the bays on the, the, yeah, 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 there's bays on the right side, um, very much distinguished, and there's some elevated garage door space and storage space on the right side. There's also yeah, um, we should probably get this. Should probably get this. Um, like, uh, yeah, I mean, you can use the there. Yeah, well, this is just a little better. Um, okay. So there's there's bays kind of going all along here, right? Right, and then there's a door here. And then there's a garage door here that's storage. And then there's another door here. And then there's some doors right here. But those are so garage access, doors. Are there's access to all of these areas here. Are um, those garage doors? I don't know they, exactly. They you are never garage there. doors, but they're like um, receiving bays. So you can't pull a vehicle into it. Right. That's, Just it, pull up next to it. Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, like a receiving So if, if you were up there, it would be a little tight, but it wouldn't be total conflict with their their trucks and stuff. Because they're using the other side. No, this is this. their side. Um, really. And then we are operating out of this kind of corner here. Uh, and then this is some private storage for the uh, owners of the I think you can see that you know if you look at this you've got trucks that are coming in and out here and here. And you start shifting this building down this that Space in between them, it gets tighter and tighter. I'm just not sure I see it as more of a pinch point than what you showed there. By shifting this down? The other issue is that you've got to take this garage door, which is a single garage door for this building here, 
and you've got Ogilvy's with their flatbed vehicles, which have a, a very large wheelbase, um, it wouldn't be able to make that that turn back in. Right now, we've designed it so that the the um, you know larger vehicles can pull up and then back into um, the garage. There'd be no way to make the turn. So that's why you shoot on it into the uh, bottom. yeah. It, again, it's to optimize um, the space, the usage. I guess we're just asking you to spec it to see if there's anything we can do. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. At this point, that, that's probably uh, there are a lot of fish to fry. Um, the, some of them are bigger than, this, than that. Um, so we'll we'll continue this. Okay, yeah, sure. To to address. Um, the color of the building. Um, call me crazy, but I don't think sandstone is a color that disappears into. The, the woods or what have you, I think it needs to be a darker color, whether it's a gray, a darker gray, or a brown, or something like that. I, I would just look at other colors that really do disappear more, because um, that's just very light. At least it looks like, and this, and this may not be an, action, an accurate representation of the colors, but yeah, you might want to bring in, the real, bring in the real color chips. Right. Again. Could they darken just the end, perhaps? Well, you've seen more than the end, especially from that house. I don't know if you could maybe just bring in the real color chips and look at some darker yeah, yeah, I mean, colors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll see what's available it, from the manufacturer. Not, not that much darker than white. Yeah. So white doesn't disappear. Or white might even disappear more. I know you want to wrap this up, but we've talked about a lot of different things. But honestly, I've only come up with five issues. One is putting a tight tank on the plan. That could be done easily. Landscaping, a little more challenging issue. Whether we can screen, perhaps putting some things to work with Kim on that. Um, the third is the business plan. How many additional trips in the next five, 10 years of projection. Fourth is an issue you guys are gonna look into, which is what is the, can you expand the non-conforming use um, and five, which you just brought up, was just to look at different colors. Are there anything? Else? Yes, no. moving the buildings. Yeah, the number one Absolutely. was seeing if there's any way you can move that deck. It doesn't have, our two yeah. architects here say they really feel that it probably could be yeah. slid yeah. down a little bit, and it would increase the amount of area. That is, is there something plan. critical about the depth of the building, for example? Can it be a little bit narrower so that if you moved it a little further that way, you, you could lengthen it and make it a little narrower? It is, is that rectangle, is that cast in concrete or...? or uh, For us, with, with how we've designed the office space, which is a 2,500 square foot mezzanine, to have it work in the way we want it to work, this is the design that we came up with our architect and manufacturer. Um, and, and that cost you know a significant amount of money, and you know we're young and on a pretty significant budget. So to go back and rework plans, I mean, you know we're kind of out of our budget on that point. So um, you know, we thought that this was going to optimize the office space and the field technician days uh, and operations the best, given the site uh, and its current. You know, what is the critical dimension? What what the critical, the, the, right now, it's, it's, I think you said it was 30 feet deep. No, 50, 50, 50, 50 feet, feet deep, by 50 feet deep. That 50 foot dimension, is that, what is it that, that is driving that internally? What's the, what's the, what's the critical piece inside? Uh, it's a structural, I, I don't know. The structural, it's a, it's a loft space coupled with a high vaulted space for our trucks in operation. And the trucks can fit underneath that's the mezzanine. Yeah. Right. Some of them can, yeah. yeah. The mezzanine level is high enough for vehicles to fit underneath. Okay, yeah. Right. Well, take a look at it. Okay. Um, I have a color palette here. Um, the manufacturer that we work with is very specific. Is there, you know, a color that you recommend? Well, just seeing this, that color is a lot better than in the than your copy. Okay, so if let's get. It. What, what color is Sandstone. Yeah. 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 Yeah
reasons why they weren't. So if you want to your feet, so you can just look at those. Um, yeah, those are, the, the trim colors are on the bottom. Um, and then we have, you know, the, the colors on the top are kind of our options for the for siding. They can mix and match. Um, well, certainly what they would do. Okay. Okay. I think the sandstone is fine now that we see the okay. real Okay. Real thing. Oh, um, this, yeah, this yeah. is what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Okay. So what the... Okay. It's got some repeat right? So that was an easy fix. So, yeah. Yeah. so the color is okay? Yeah. Color is okay. Yeah. Can you get rid of that one? Check. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we, we'll continue to. Work so fancy. are you at? You're asking us to review the size and placement. But if we come to a conclusion, this is the best place, then this is the best that's place. That's the way it is. Okay. I mean, we'll have to we'll, give it an we'll honest, give it an honest effort. Yeah. yeah. Like, could the building be 45 feet deep? Okay. Maybe it can. It can be that hugely expensive for them to just maybe crank in another little set of numbers. Yeah. And push the button and watch the new cat came through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised. I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised. I'm sure if you make the phone call, it's a I think it's a, 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 a standard, standard building footprint for the company that's making the buildings. Oh, really? Oh, so that's it. So it's a prefab. Oh, thank you. That's the one. That's the That's the one. 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 That's